hey loves welcome back to another sewing tutorial in this video i'm gonna show you guys how i made this beautiful mermaid dress guys this video is very detailed in this video i'll show you how to cut and stitch this dress if this sounds like what you want to know how to do please don't go anywhere keep watching and if you've not subscribed to this channel please go ahead and subscribe and also don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you find it helpful without further ado i'm gonna take you guys straight to the cutting table shortly after the break for this floor length dress you're going to need the following tools so this is an off shoulder gown the first thing i did was to um, determine how low I want my off shoulder to be. If you want your off shoulder to be 5 inches low from your neck or 4 inches low from your neck, you have to determine that before you start marking. 5 is normal for me, but if you want it to be very low, you can go as low as 6 inches or 7 inches. So this line is the bust line. This one is the half length of the dress. This one is the hip line. This is the knee length and this one is the three quarter length of the gown. Because this off shoulder gown is going to come down by five inches, I am going to remove that from the tape and then start my measurement. Like this is the easiest way you can do this. So the bust point is 11 inches. I removed five inches from the tape and then measured our 11 inches. And this is our 11 inch mark. I gave an extra 0.5 in for the seam. And then coming to the waist, the waist measurement is 17 inches. I removed 5 inches. I kept my tape at that point and I measured 17 inches. I gave an extra seam allowance. From our shoulder to our hip is 27. I marked it right here. This is our knee length. And then this is our three quarter length now to get the bust measurement the bust measurement is 43 43 by 4 is going to give you 10.8 so our 10.8 mark is right here i'm going to give an extra one inch seam allowance which is going to give us 11.8 inches our waist measurement is 34 34 by 4 is going to give us 8.5 so i'm going to add one inch for the dart and also one inch for the seam so that's going to give us 10.5 inches the hip measurement is 45 45 by 4 is going to give us 11.2 so this is our 11.25 mark. I'm going to add an extra 1 inch seam allowance which is going to give us 12.25 or you can just make it 12.3. Now to connect from my hip to my waist, I'm going to use a hip curve to do that. Then I also connect from the bust to the waist. So guys, I'm done with the hip, the waist and the bust. Let me take care of the armhole before I come down to the knee and then the three quarter length. Now the neck width that I would like to use for this tutorial is 10 inches. Now because this is in a fold, I'm going to mark 5 inches. And then I'm going to give an extra half inch for seam. Then I'll mark at 5.5 inches right here. Now to get the armhole, the armhole is the bust measurement divided by 6. I'm going to add 1.5 inch to my answer. I remember what we're making is an off shoulder gown. So to do this, I'll place the tape making sure that the 5 inches that we're going to remove for the off shoulder is going to be off from the fabric. And I'm going to mark at 8.7 right here. Our bust measurement is 11.8. I'll extend it up to this. This is going to form our upper chest line. So from that point, I'm going to connect it all the way to the neck. Now, this is actually a different way of cutting an off shoulder. People have different ways of cutting their off shoulder, but this pattern is a pattern that I know how to do well. It has helped me over time. Now this line that I drew right here is going to be for the back armhole. Now for the front armhole, I'm going to get the midpoint of this line. So from this point to this point is 7 3 quarter inch. So this is going to give us 3.9 inches. So I'm going to come in here by 3 quarter inch. So from that 3 quarter inch, I will draw a straight line to connect it to the width of the neck. And then I'll use my armhole curve and finish this up.
So guys, this is going to be the front armhole and then this will be the back armhole. So it depends on how deep you want your neck to be. I want my neck depth to be 1.5 inch. Remember already we have taken away 5 inches from the neck so it's going to total to 6.5 inches. I don't know if this makes any sense to you. So guys, I've taken care of the neck, the armhole, the bust, the waist, the hip. So I'm going to go over to the knee. Now to get the knee, I'm going to take a hip measurement, which is 12.25 or 12.3. I'm going to take that measurement to our knee and mark it right there. All right, guys, this is our 12.3 mark. And because this is a mermaid gown, I'm going to take this in because I don't want it to be straight so I want it to be curvy at the hip area so I'm going to mark at 1.5 inches ordinarily what I'm supposed to do is just to connect this from the knee line to the hips all right but what I usually do is to come down from the hip by 3 inches or 2.5 why I do this is because I don't want this to affect the hip measurement all right so this is actually my pattern and this has always always worked for me and i think you should also adopt it so what we have here is 12.3 so i'm going to take that 12.3 to this place where it came down by three inches so i'm going to draw a straight line from this point where i came in by 1.5 to the three inch mark and also try to curve it so you don't have a sharp edge so at this three quarter length i'm going to mark our hip measurement which is 12.3 i'm going to mark it right here and from this angle i'm going to draw a straight line i'll also bring a curve ruler and curve that angle a little just to make sure we don't have a sharp edge so at this point i'm going to cut out our dress pattern now coming over to the armhole, I'm going to cut the back armhole first before I cut the front armhole. So this is going to be our front armhole and then this is going to be our front neck depth. I didn't touch both, I'll still cut them out but I need to use this to cut out my back pattern. At this point, I gave one inch zipper allowance so the front um, bodice was placed from that one inch. So this is just the difference between the front and the back. So I'm going to cut the back right now. So guys, this is what we have. Remember, this line right here is for the front. So I'm going to go ahead and lift it from the back bodies and cut it out. I'm also going to cut the front armhole. So I'm going to slit open our zipper allowance. At this waist area to eliminate that zipper bulge you usually see on dresses I'm going to come in by half an inch I have discovered that when I do this to dresses it tends to lap very well at the back like very very well so from this half inch I'm going to draw a line all the way to the hip area I'm also going to draw it nothing all the way to the bust line So I'm going to use this pattern to cut out our lining. Our lining is not going to be as long as this. I'm going to stop somewhere at the knee line. So this is actually a very full gown and the other part is going to be attached to the lining. So this one is a straight quarter part. 
and I'm going to attach the other one to the lining. This dress is not going to have a waist line cut. I'm going to shift this and then I'm going to start doing my slash and spread method on this. So I'm going to get the midpoint of this knee line. The midpoint is like 5.4. I'm going to mark 5.4 here and I'm also going to mark it at the hemline. All right, guys, I'm going to draw a straight line to connect our max. Now to do the slash and spread, you can either slash this open just right away or you can create little triangles on this. So I'm going to create some little triangles. So I'm going to do this at this, you know, folded part. I'm going to do it in the middle and I'm going to do it by the side. So I'm going to mark half inch on both sides and I'll connect with a straight ruler. Now coming to the center point, I'm going to mark half inch and also connect it all the way to the knee line. Remember, I'm going to sew one inch on the side. One inch is our seam allowance. So I'm going to remove 1.5 inch from this angle. So I'm going to place it on the back piece because I want to also create the small triangles on the back piece. So I had to place it on the back because I don't want to make any mistake. So I'm going to start cutting out our small triangles. So guys, I opened it up and this is what we have. So I'm going to create tiny flays that I'm going to put in between the small quarters. So to create this flay, what I'm going to do, I have a square fabric and I'm going to fold it this way. So before I start to cut, I'm going to measure the slash that I created, which is going to give us 12.5 inches. So I'm going to mark 12.5 inches right here. So I'm going to use this curve ruler to connect our points but if you don't have these you can always do a freehand sketch. So guys this is what we have. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. To fix this, I'll make sure that this point you see in here is going to be placed at this point. So I'll take it to the machine and I'll sew on one side.
so guys this is what we have we're still going to iron this to give it a more relaxed look this is actually the back i'm going to put this small flay at the center back but that can only happen when i fix my zipper so i'm going to fix a zipper before i fix any small flay here i have a detailed video on how to insert an invincible zipper i'm going to leave that so you can just click and watch that video but for the meantime i'm going to go ahead and insert our invincible zipper and come back and show you guys what to do so guys this is what we have i love the small drop in so this is what it looks like guys i'm loving this already so before i fix this tiny place by the side of this dress i'll go over to the machine and join this on one inch mark that was the allowance i gave for this side seam but before i do that i will fix my darts so this um dress is folded into two on the waistline i came in by four and quarter inch so to get this you're going to use your bust broad like your bust pan divide that by two and add half inch to it that was how i got this one and then I marked half inch on both sides because that's the what I'm going to stitch on. So from the hip line, I came up by two inches. I also marked the four and quarter inch. And then from the bust line, I came down by one inch. So I'm going to fold it this way. So this is actually on a straight line. I'm going to sew from this point to this point point and then i'll sew it to this point so guys this is what we have so far i've not ironed this so ignore whatever you see once i iron it it's going to look all beautiful the next thing i would do is to join the tiny place by the side remember i told you i'm going to join it on both sides so i already joined the side of this gown on a one inch mark if I stitch this lace on the side, it's not going to be the same with others because the allowance I gave here is one inch and I used a half inch mark to stitch other ones. So I'm going to come back here and reduce this by half inch so that it will rhyme with the other ones. So I'll go ahead and fix this um, piece on the side. I'll also fix this on the other side. Now for the other long um, flay that you can see on the dress, I'm going to attach that particular one to the lining. That is why it doesn't have a cut on the waist. So because I'm going to be attaching this flay to the lining i'm going to measure the circumference of the hem of my lining and i'll use that to cut out the flay so from this pointed angle i'm going to mark 13.5 inches i'm going to do that all the way around then i'll gently use my curve ruler to connect the points that i marked you can actually do a freehand skirt if you don't have this, so do not bother. So guys, I'm trying to hold my fabric in place with my pins. The full length of this dress is 66, so I'm going to measure my lining and because this is an off shoulder, I'm going to measure this way. So the length of this line is 37 and then to get the 66 which is the full length I'm going to place my tape measure at that point where I already came down by 13.5 and from that point I'm going to place it at 37 inch mark. So my tape stopped at 60 so I'm going to give a mark where my tape stopped and I'm going to add 6 inches to that. So what this means is that from this point to this point, what we have is 28.5. So I'm going to make it 30 inches. This will include the seam on the hem and then the seam on the place where we're going to join it to the lining. So 
So let me cut this out. So I'm going to start, you know, connecting my points gently. So once that is done, I'm going to cut. So I'll use this front piece to cut out the back. So what I'm going to be doing differently here is that I'm going to create a tail for the back. So it's going to join at this point. So I'm going to start cutting from this point. Now this part depends on how long you want your tail to be if you want it to be longer than this then you have to increase the tail length but i think i'm okay with this one i also have a detailed tutorial on how to fix a tail on a five pieces dress so these are different ways to fix tails and dresses i'm also going to make another one to show you guys how you can also fix a tail on a dress So guys, this is what we have. I'm going to go ahead and fix this to the lining. I don't want the edge of the flay to be sharp like this. So I'm going to make it blonde a little bit. So this is looking roundish. It's no longer pointed. So coming back to my first piece, I have already overlocked the entire dress. So what I'm going to do at this point is to fold and stitch. I'm going to fold this on a quarter inch mark or on a half inch mark. So coming over to the neckline, this is actually not compulsory, alright? This is totally optional. I'm going to fix a lace on the neck. So I already cut out the lace for the neck. I did that with my dress. So I'm going to be attaching a lace here. This is just to give it an extra design or touch. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to be doing this the back. I might as well decide to attach a lace at the back. But for now, I'm going to just attach it to the front. Now, because I don't want the stitches to be seen, I'm going to place my lace fabric this way and stitch along this line. Then I'll flip it back. And then for the inner gown, I'm, I've already overlocked it. I'm going to go to the machine and hem this part. I've already hemmed the, um, the down part of this dress. And then I fixed my applique on the neckline. I'm going to fix my sleeve. The sleeve has already been sewn. I have a detailed tutorial on how to cut an all shoulder sleeve. I used that pattern to cut out this one. I'm going to leave that information in the description box below. All right. So to fix this to the body of the dress, I'm going to make sure that the line on the sleeve aligns with the line on the dress, like the side of the dress. I'm going to stitch this on a half inch mark. Guys, I'm so sorry, I lost the clip on how to fix the lining parts to the dress. I am so sorry about it. I feel so sad because I filmed that part but it got deleted mistakenly so guys to attach the lining to the main dress there is no fast or hard draw on how to do that all you need to do is to join the neckline of the main dress to the neckline of the lining 
you top stitch and then you're good to go i'm so sorry that i couldn't complete the video if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel if you've not done that already until next time guys keep crushing it and i'll catch you in my next video bye